also a virtual meeting and we are being recorded via Zoom. If you could please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, we have our departmental budget hearings as our first order of business, and I want to thank all of our department heads and your support staff who waited as we got through our executive session a little bit late. So we're going to kick it off with our town clerk, our new town clerk. So please come forward. We're joined by the members of our finance committee at this evening's meeting. Madam Chair, through you. Yes, Mr. Um, Gilberto. To those who did not have the opportunity to, to meet her, Susan Duplin is our new town clerk here in her second week. Um, I'm pleased to have her uh, join us. Um, a couple of things, uh, just as I've mentioned in previous hearings, um, we've asked that the, uh, the presentations be abbreviated to really the issues and the needs. And so there's only a couple of things that require commentary on this budget, which Ms. Dublin did not prepare, it was prepared by Mrs. Stats in December and January of this year, but she is, I believe, up to speed on the budget and prepared to briefly speak to it. Secondly, Madam Chair, through you, um, I'm just going to ask if there's anybody on the Zoom who is a member of the Finance Committee, um, if you could just raise your hand so we could just note that you're there. I don't see anybody, but I just want to confirm that. Okay, Madam Chair, through you to the town clerk. Okay, welcome. Thank you for having me. And now I'd like to meet all of the finance committee members. Thank you. And uh, of course, I met you before. So um, as Mike mentioned, um, your retired town clerk, Barbara, uh, was nice enough to prepare the budget for me. So, um, and I reviewed the budget, and basically it's level funded. The only difference is in FY23, we have three scheduled elections. So uh, we have the September primary, we have the November election, and then we have the town election next year. So she factored in um, the increase based on those elections. As you know, every other year we have one, and then you know, the opposite year we have um, additional state elections. The other thing that she factored in on the budget was um, the poll workers are, um, their hourly rate is $13.50 an hour. The minimum wage went up. So uh, beginning January 1st, 2021, it went up to $14.25. So the two fall elections will have that rate for poll workers. And then come January 1st, 2023, the minimum wage was up to fifteen dollars an hour, so she factored um, those wages in the budget. All right. Do we have questions from the members of the board? All set. Questions from the finance committee, Mr. Keller. Uh, I understand there could be a second. Um, uh, voting at the for the uh, sewer, Special so that would be another uh, election, election that we would have to do. Is that included in this budget? No. Does it need to be, Mr. Gilberto? Mm -hmm. uh, Madam Chair, through you. Um, so this election does not. Th so this budget includes the regular <coughs> election scheduled for the upcoming fiscal year 2023. It does not consider any special election. Um, nor does it consider the poll workers that would be required for a third town meeting, which is something that was identified in our last discussion. So the town administrator's budget is carrying the cost for the town, the third town meeting itself as a safeguard in case it were necessary, but this budget will need to be adjusted to reflect the cost of the poll workers at that town meeting when it's held most likely in October or November. If the select board were to proceed with uh, some sort of action that requires a vote at a special election, we would need to fund that at that point, yes. Well, is that Mr. Felhart? Thank you. Any other questions of the Finance Committee? All set? Okay. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Pretty basic. All right. Our next um, departmental budget is human resources. Good evening, Madam Chair. Robert Collins, uh, Director of Human Resources. I will keep it brief. Uh, the town and its departments to continue to punch above its weight. We're performing very well. Uh, we're asking for three program improvements in essence. First, uh, as you all may well know, Allison Olson is our very valuable uh, benefits coordinator. Uh, we have, for the last several years, uh, allotted no overtime whatsoever. Uh, we have a, a small amount for straight time. And with the great resignation and all the challenges we've been facing lately, uh, it's in a position where she earns comp time. That sort of self-perpetuates a problem in terms of our being able to serve the departments that therefore serve the public. What I'm asking for is that uh, her hours increase from 30 to 35, and we're a full-time uh, employee. Her wage rate will not change, just her hours. She will be uh, taking an additional five hours, and that should help address some of the needs in this problem. I would also like to point out that over the last several years, uh, the, the level of responsibility that she's been taking on has increased each and every year, and very probably. Uh, the second is, uh, put as a $25,000 increase uh, relating to professional services can really be broken down into two areas. The first is $15,000 as uh, we all know our, our long serving police chief and public safety director despite my best efforts is still planning on retiring and uh, it'll be a Herculean task to replace him. Uh, we're looking to uh, get uh, an outside uh, group or agency to come in here and, and do that task. Uh, after consulting with the Mass Municipal Association Human Resources, as well as some other uh, connections, including uh, some university uh, courses that I took, uh, it, it is a, you know, a relatively conservative but reasonable number for a chief's search. Now, the number is dependent upon the number of folks that apply and, and the parameters that we're seeking. Uh, certainly, if it should be under that, and that's what the hope is, that any monies would certainly not be spent. Uh, but that is a, a, a solid, uh, we hope to be a solid number. The $10,000 is for a salary survey. Uh, again, uh, in consult, uh, consultation with the Mass Municipal Association Human Resources Group, we'll call it the high. It's the group of all the other HI directors, well, the Commonwealth, as well as uh, those that I've worked closely with, um, I don't believe that we would uh, be in a position, uh, and I'm not asking, to do a comprehensive salary survey. So instead, I'm actually looking to do a targeted salary survey. This would be uh, 10 to 13 positions based upon the amounts that I've been told. Uh, it would come in at $10,000. That would obviously be put out through finance in terms of uh, who we would get, what the parameters would be, and what the targeting of that would be. And the final thing is for tuition reimbursement. There's a request for $18,196. Uh, that's to further the uh, education of our finance director. Uh, like myself previously, she had uh, taken the Suffolk University uh, series of courses supported by the town in uh, municipal leadership and management. And the courses that she took there are all applicable to getting an MPA. Uh, the, the amount requested would reflect four MBA classes uh, to be enrolled in the September of 2022. Everything else is um, level budget. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Collins. Questions? Members of the board. All set. Members of the finance committee. Questions? Mr. Fowler. Yeah, the professional services for police chief recruitment? Yes. Would that include public safety director? That would depend on whether the town wishes to go in that direction or not. And I don't know. I, I, I don't know what the future of that brings. I defer to the town minister. Madam Chair, through you, in all likelihood, probably not. It probably would be a separate process. I, I did have a couple of questions. Mr. Pulver, are you all set? I'm Do you have any follow-up? Any other questions? Madam Chair, through you. From the Finance Committee? Mr. Gilberto. Just to let you know, Mr. Johnson has joined. Okay. 
Okay, and Mr. Johnson, if you have any questions, just raise your hand or let us know. Okay. Um, Mr. Collins, with regard to the $10,000 for the targeted survey, uh, salary survey, I, I need it's, you to explain that. Yeah, compensation survey. It would be about the salary and compensation uh, of employees. Of uh, particularly, uh, I believe that we would start off with those employees that are not members of collective bargaining agreement, but are currently either under uh, individual employment contracts or are members of the NUA. I misunderstood you. I thought you meant in connection with the police chief's position. So there are two separate ones. Well, one okay. would be the 15 to uh, recruit and, <coughs> uh, and help us with the selection process in terms of uh, the chief's successor. And then the other is a broader based uh, 10 to 50. The, the amount that I was told was 750 to 1,000 is the, the norm. You can go more than that, but I wouldn't recommend it. Um, and it would be based on that type of money, 10 to 13 positions that we would uh, be looking at their overall compensation. As we look at, uh, in the last year, we had about 45 openings in 10 different departments. We're all hearing about, you know, even in the post-COVID world, the great resignation. You know, we have proceeded in a certain uh, fashion in terms of compensation in a fairly consistent way for many years but without external uh, guidance as to whether or not that is still a viable model going forward. You know, we, we typically look at, I say, a 1% coal. Generally speaking, coal is never really exactly 1%. It's sometimes less, often more. So if we're going to look at a fair and equitable way of uh, compensating those who serve the public, we need to have an objective outside party come in, look at the overall compensation, look at uh, what is going in other communities of our size and economic status, and make recommendations. U ultimately, it's up to uh, the town administrator and the board to make final decisions on it, but they, they, they would then become far more in, uh, informed decisions. Um, Mrs. Harold, I confused the uh, $25,000 24 to under professional services. Is that both the police chief search and the salary compensation? That is correct. Okay. 15 I, of which I, are for the. No, I understand yeah, that. Yeah. I initially thought that what you had said that it was uh, 25,000 to replace the police chief and an additional 10,000. No, if I misspoke, I apologize. <laughs> no, I was confused about that too. Mrs. Hurl, but do you have any other questions? No further questions, thank you. So I just want to focus back in on the chief's retirement. We have to agree to accept his retirement, correct? <laughs> <laughs> and you're not going anywhere. <laughs> well, to, 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 to the chair, as a constitutional scholar, there is a limit as to how much we can have somebody work for us. And they no longer wish to. <laughs> what about 10 years? <laughs> they no longer wish to. Well, I think someone was asking about the public safety director position, and I believe the way that it is in the charter, it can, it doesn't have to be the police chief. It can be another one of our public safety officials in in the city. But also, are we, are we, this search that would be conducted for replacement of the chief? We'd be looking at our own personnel who might want to be promoted to that as well, wouldn't we? I would, it would not be limited to external candidates. No, okay. you, you know, we have always, I believe as a town, had a philosophy of promoting from within when the best candidate is from within. Yeah. And certainly, uh, and I will actually steal a line from the chief, uh, we have one advantage uh, with an internal candidate is it's not the moment that they're interviewing the counts. Every day that they've been on the job, they've been interviewing. So every day they've made a value statement. And that either <coughs> assists them greatly and mightily in getting a promotion or precludes them from getting it. And if this, this earmark is, it seems like it's rather necessary to, to move forward on that. What's your, what is the timeline? that's projected from beginning to end for that service. Well, once this is uh, approved, I would work with the TA, I would work with the chief, I would work with the finance director to get 
the right parameter to set out so we could solicit bids. Okay. And then move from there. And the, the ideal is to get somebody in so that there isn't a gap in service. Okay. So we, we, that's why we're, we're looking to do it now. Okay. Any other questions? All right. Thank you, Mr. Collins. And we know you do a lot to do employee recognition, and I think that that, I, I was glad to see that you, you ramped up on that, I guess, after, as COVID wanes, hopefully, mm -hmm. that more of that will happen. Now so. that we can actually enjoy each other's company. Yeah. Thank you. See each other's faces, yes. Thank so you very thank you for everything great. you do for the town. All right. Our next budget is veteran services. Welcome. Hey, hey. Welcome. Hey, um, On what was in our packet, those two changes weren't on it. It was just one for Allison. Did you see that in the packet? No. I was thinking maybe I looked at the wrong thing. There were so many. Um, Good evening. Good evening. How are you? Nice to see everybody in person. So um, the <clears throat> the veterans department's um, budget is 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 level funded. Um, I'm not asking for an increase um, nor a decrease um, in um, in finances. Um, just to give you a quick update, though, just to to um, we have lost quite a few people um, through um, the last year and a half. Um, well, from February 2020 to February 2022. <coughs> Um, our recipients for just Chapter 115 went from 27 down to 15, with nine of them passing away due to COVID, three um, Mrs. Uh, during Nagar, COVID, excuse me, and three I'm moved. sorry, excuse me one moment. I, I, there might be a transmission issue going on here. I'm so, sorry. Certainly. I just want to make sure we set your PowerPoint presentation to share here. So oh, that folks I'm can sorry. That's okay. I'm sorry to interrupt you. I, I apologize. apologize. I apologize especially Especially for what you were, for the content you were telling us, I'm sorry to disrupt you. Okay, thank you. So, so you I, will, I will retract, I will go back. Thank you. So the, the, the goal is for us, is it's going to be level funded, but what I wanted to um, advise you all of is um, for a little update on the Chapter 115. Um, as of um, February 2020 to February 2022, uh, the number of recipients have gone from 27 down to 15, um, with nine of them that had passed away during COVID, um, and three um, had moved um, during the COVID time. Um, the numbers are expected to rise again due to the significant number of um, veterans that are passing, leaving widows in need of financial assistance due to the loss um, of their incomes. Um, as of uh, since December 2020, um, that and I keep track of all the funeral homes, local ones, anyways. So to date, I've had from December, excuse me, of 2020, um, we've lost over 58 veterans themselves, not on Chapter 115, but veterans in general. So that can open up um, a whole new situation of um, once we get information out to them to let them know, you know. We're here for them and, and keep track of all the widows. Um, there may be quite a few in there that could be um, in need of the, the assistance as well. Again, um, due to the loss of whether it's disability, um, uh, veterans disabilities or um, monies or even um, their social securities. And uh, you can just go blank on it. I'm thinking. HDMI cables, but it's a. I didn't touch nothing. No, it's Your not internet easy. connection is unstable. It's, it's not easy. Oh, okay. Maybe we can. Here we go. Wait. Come in there. <laughs> so what happens is, is you know, typically, you know, you're looking at two two incomes coming in. You know, obviously for a husband and a wife, but um, especially if they're 
um, 100% disabled vets, um, and we've lost a few of those um, in, the, in this count. Uh, what ends up happening is that money, which is roughly about 3,600 a month just in disability alone, that goes away. And um, so then it's a matter of whether if the veteran passed away from um, passed away from anything that was connected to service, um, and it mirrors um, the VA's application, um, their decision letters, as, and, and it mirrors the uh, death certificate, then there's an, uh, an opportunity for the, for the spouse to get an additional 1500 um, So again, we're working on those. I've, we've just worked on three of those, so um, then we're waiting on decisions back from the VA on those. Um, so right now the goal for FY23 is just to continue to contact these veterans of the deceased veterans regarding um, the Chapter 115 benefits as well as the, um, the VA benefits as well. So we always try to go VA first, federal, and then work our way down to state. Um, I just believe I have one more slide here for you folks, so try that. So um, additional uh, Chapter 115 assistance, um, I just bringing it to your attention. It's not affecting the budget in any way, shape, or form. Um, but um, they all got that lovely 40% increase. Um, I mean, 5.9% increase in their Social Security um, from over 40 years ago. Um, the lovely thing that they did was is they decided to jump up their um, Medicare Part B by $25 more. So because of what was going on and everything going, um, they, they did some calculations up at the Department of Veterans Services, and they are giving an additional 70, between January and um, June of this year, um, right now, they are giving the um, veterans, uh, anybody that's on Chapter 115, an additional $79 per month. Um, just so you know, that's a supplement to it, and it's, and I believe we've already received the monies for it. Um, they're, they're reimbursing us 100% for that versus 75%. So that's why I just wanted to, you know, let you know what's going on with that, but it's not affecting the budget. It's not 75% reimbursable, it's 100%. Um, so the Veterans Department, therefore, is a level funded budget for FY23, and any questions? Do we have questions? Members of the board? No question, just a statement. No. Mrs. Gonzalez. Thank you. I know that this isn't just a job for you. Your heart's in it, and it shows. Thank you. Any other questions of the board? <clears throat> questions of the finance committee? Tough to ask on a level services budget, so. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Smith. <laughs> All right, next we have elder services. I'm going to look to Mr. Gilbert over there. Double duty as our technician, <laughs> our IT technician and TA. Thank you. So just a quick update, and this is probably more a programmatic update than a, uh, a budget update for the department. And I, I did see Ms. Greer here. She, there she is. Oh, Sherry yes. from uh, the Senior Center is here. And I know um, Ms. Tilton, um, who uh, many of you know, uh, could not join us this evening, but she did send her regards. Um, <coughs> She um, was not, unfortunately not able to make it due to another committee meeting. Um, the, the, the budget that you see before you is the budget that was submitted by Mrs. Penny prior to her retirement. And uh, the, the major changes in that budget are driven by um, what would have been um, an increase uh, associated with um, cost of living in the director's position to a $70,000 salary. So that's in the department headline. And then also uh, non-union wages and the clerical wages associated with the settled collective bargaining 
uh, for a grand total amongst all three uh, lines of $8,585. Um, since that time, um, we've, uh, we've been moving forward with uh, posting for the position for um, the vacancy created by Mary's retirement. And so this week we will be advertising position for a director of elder services with a salary for a range of $75,000 to $85,000. So that will be an increase um, in the uh, position that, uh, designed to align with where we believe the market uh, is at with regard to the, uh, to the position. Um, moving forward in the department, the things I will just note um, is that Susan and Sherry continue to sort of keep things moving forward down there, including the return of folks in person at the uh, center. So I just want to recognize them for their efforts while we go through this process and that uh, we're hopeful to bring it to um, a resolution soon. Um, I'll be speaking later on in the, uh, this evening as well. I, I know that um, our desire is also to receive filling the position of Director of Public Services, which will also concurrently be advertised as well. So we're just trying not to lose too much time by, uh, by advertising the two at the same time. So I would just ask the community to keep an eye out for that. Um, and um, the, I expect that there'll be more to come, uh, if not at the June time meeting in the fall with regard to the in the other services department. But otherwise, what you see is a fairly even rollover of that budget for the time being, other than the change in the numbers. <coughs> and I would just add, I got a nice commentary with regard to the activities of the, uh, the department over the uh, past year. All of you may know, some of you may know, but all of you should know, that the department was directly involved, including Sherry and Susan and myself and Mary, placing phone calls to folks when the vaccination clinics uh, opened up in the late winter and early spring of 2021. They were directly involved in that activity. I want to thank them for that. Um, they have been assisting seniors uh, on a walk-in basis by telephone, um, by uh, delivery to their homes as well um, when needed. So those services do continue um, and they have been um, slowly opening things back up um, and I believe that that will Questions? Any questions of the board? Any questions of the finance committee? Pretty straightforward. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Gilberto. Next is library. Yeah. Oh my word! This is board coming. Coming. Yeah. I'm sorry. I. I I, I should put my glasses on because okay, I, I, I put a check mark and I, it looks like it's in the middle and it really isn't. <laughs> Miss, how could I forget? I look forward to I this know. one every year. I just wore her jacket. <laughs> yes. Oh, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> prioritize mental health, which honestly I've always done anyway. 
The second is the importance of messaging, which again is something that I pride myself on being done. The message that I send out is important to me. So tonight we'll discuss a bit about these two topics. of discussion about loneliness and social isolation, needless to say, makes sense. Um, just briefly, nearly half of all Americans report as being lonely. And this, this is all Americans, this is not just you. You, it is 67%. Pretty staggering numbers. So when we think of that, that's the cutting the from in half, and half of us identifying and experiencing loneliness. So we think, okay, what, what's the big deal? So according to the National Institute for Health Research, loneliness and social isolation significantly increases the risk of mental health issues or problems, specifically anxiety and depression. We think to ourselves, okay, what, what does that mean? When you look at the effects of loneliness, there's some pretty concerning things. It can increase the levels of cortisol, restful sleep, headaches, other explained aches and pains, negative outlook, anxiety, depression, um, increased substance use, all a whole slew of really risky, unwanted things. So then we go into anxiety. Anxiety is a very natural thing for a lot of us. We get up in front of people, we talk, we get nervous. That's very natural, that's a very normal response. What isn't is when we have very irrational, unreasonable fears of everyday things. And unfortunately, 7.1% of children have been diagnosed with anxiety between the ages of 3 and 17. That's 4.4 million children. So this has a lot of information, okay? So we'll, I'll quickly go through it. Um, it's discussing depression and substance use. Mental Health America does an annual survey or annual, they collect data addressing these different issues. We're touching upon four topics. The first one being the number of youth experiencing at least one major depressive episode, which is bigger than the blues. It's, it's a disorder that causes a persistent feeling of sadness and loss of interest. The next item is number of youth experiencing at least one severe MDE, which is over 2.5 million U.S. youth. The next one is youth ex experiencing substance use disorder. And then the last one, which is probably the most staggering to me, is the amount of kids who did not receive mental health services. So you'll see through this list, it's, I've broken it down to Massachusetts, where Massachusetts is ranked, and then the percentage that they have of youth, and then the number of youth. If you go through, for the first one, in Massachusetts ranks 22nd, in the United States at 13.86% of youth who have experienced at least one major depressive episode. That's 67,000 youth in Massachusetts. That is more than the entire town of Haverhill. The next one, the number of youth experiencing at least one severe major depressive episode. Again, Massachusetts ranks 10th with 8.5%. That's 40,000 youth, again, the size of this town of Boomer. The third is with substance use. Ranked 22nd with 3.9%, that's 19,000 youth in Massachusetts who have experienced a substance use disorder. 19,000 youth, that's the size of Newburyport. And then the last is the number of youth who did not receive medical treatment here in Massachusetts. Massachusetts was ranked 39th with 61.2% of youth who did not receive treatment. It's 41,000 youth. That's the size of Lemon Star. These are pretty staggering numbers. So I'm going to bring it a little closer to us. North Reading. Going by the census.gov, with the 2018 North Redlands population was 15,710. According to that report, 21.8% were under the age of 18, essentially youth. So that brings it to the number of 3,425. Using those same statistics and percentages, 
That means North Reading youth, there are 475 North Reading youth who have experienced a major depressive episode, another 291 who experienced a severe one, 134 North Reading youth who have experienced substance use disorder, and 469, which is the 61.2% of youth that have experienced the major depressive experience, or episode, I'm sorry, not receiving treatment, which essentially is one in three youth who are receiving treatment. So these are the numbers none of us want to think about, we don't want to talk about, but they're important. 47,511 people died in, in the United States in 2019 by suicide. Again, to give that a bit of perspective, Fenway Park seats 37,000 people. So more, think of Fenway Park being full and another 10,000 people standing outside. That is the amount of Americans that died by suicide in 2019. Suicide is the leading cause of death for 15 and 16 year old American kids. It's the second leading cause for 10 to 34 year olds. This circle in the middle, which I, I think is meaningful, they're all meaningful, but based on the most recent youth risk behavior survey from 2019, 8.9% of 9 through 12 graders made at least one attempt of suicide in the past 12 months. So basing that on, say, North Harding High School, on an average of 200 kids per class, that would be 800 kids, that's 71, uh, excuse me, 71 North Harding High School students who attempted suicide in the last year. On average, there are 130 suicides per day. That's more than five per year. So what time do we start tonight's meeting? Seven? 30. Okay. <laughs> so at this point, that's what, almost seven people who have died by suicide. The good news, there are practical strategies for world cause of mental health. And the even better news, youth services are doing all of them. We're ensuring that youth know that there are people who, who care about them and we make sure they know who they are. We create opportunities for social connection for youth of all ages. We encourage youth to find activities, structure, and purpose. We prioritize social reconnection through programming and fun activities. And again, the last and probably one of the most important, we send very clear positive messaging of promoting mental health and well-being. So again, we talk about messaging. It's simple, it's the sending and processing of communications and information. It's equally as important as all of this other information that I've given you. Because we have this information, we know it, but what are we doing with it? And not only what are we doing with it, what message are we sending to our youth? If we have this information, it's imperative that we're sending a message to our youth that we care, that they're relevant, and we consider and prioritize their needs. So the FY 2023 goal for youth services is to send a clear message to every community member, young and old, that they deserve and can have a sense of belonging in North Reading. The one missing piece, manpower. A team of one can only do so much. I have a proven success record. I, I've, I've done everything that I can and I strive to do more, but there's no denying it, more manpower enables the department to reach more kids and to support more kids. <coughs> Thank you. Does anyone have any questions or comments? Yes. Questions of the board, from the board. Mr. Walner. I'm just, because um, I know you've requested this before, and you know, I, we all really appreciate what you're doing, so there's no doubt about that. I'm just wondering, you know, um, is there any way you can get volunteers to help you do um, some of the activities that you need help with? Is there, because it seems like there's a lot of people who are interested in this topic that would like to help out if they could. And I don't know, as an alternative, is that, is that a way you could spread the load out without necessarily hiring somebody? Because let's say we don't, mm -hmm. let's say we don't have a position. Is there a workaround that would help you get to what you want to achieve to, to a volunteer effort? So yes, in theory. I mean, I've, I've actually started creating, um, with my youth services committee, almost directorships and I've created, um, we're, 
I'm trying to tap into their strengths because the reality is not everyone's interested in going and facilitating a youth group. And to be quite honest with you, not everyone is equipped to go facilitate right. a youth group. Um, so I'm trying to tap into the needs of the department and then the strengths of my committee members. And the reality is a lot of those committee members are full-time workers. They're, they're volunteers. So again, a lot of the programming, if I'm looking for manpower to help with the programming, it's afternoons. Um, I've toyed with the idea of trying to bring in and develop a, a, a volunteer base. Um, but to be very honest with you, a lot of time and energy goes into that as well. I'm right. embedding them, I'm supervising them, having them be quarried. So there's also a certain level of liability that comes with that as well yeah. that we, we need the sustainment to consider. Does that answer your question? Yeah, it does. It just <coughs> does Yeah. You, Ms. Wall, there actually already is a team of uh, youth services committee that offers assistance, but as Mrs. Ford said, their, their, you know, their assistance is, is limited to, you know, kind of somewhat of an oversight and then maybe putting some ideas together or maybe participating mm -hmm. in running some of the events that, that youth services runs. But it sounds to me like what you are seeking, which you've requested previously, is just the person in the seat every day with the director being able to, yeah. you know, expand upon the, the services and the outreach yeah. that's going on. So, so I'll just I'll just say it, it. It seems like our youth are under major stress. I have I think many people see that. I think the you know the COVID pandemic has definitely pushed that even more to the edge. And I don't see um, an easy path for them after this point. So you getting assistance, in my mind, is a really strong, powerful thing. And uh, if there is a way to problem solve and try to find more volunteers to help you actually do this with an assistant, I think it'd be expanding your group one way or another would be a good thing. At least I'd be happy to offer my help you know, to try to problem solve that. But I think you getting an assistant is a really good idea. And I think our kids need it. There's a lot of kids who don't do sports, don't do other things. They need you. And those are the kids that are What's that? Those are the kids that are that, that's who you reach. Who are, and that's those are the who most vulnerable, serve. right? Exactly. They're most vulnerable. It's the kids who are falling through the cracks. Right. I agree. My opinion. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? Any questions from the finance committee? No? Um, I do have a question. So in the budget, you put in a figure of 25000 for that assistant. Am I reading that correctly? And I, I did, yes. And you said it's a non it's a non benefited. So mm -hmm. how many hours would that would you be expecting that position? Part time obviously. Nineteen hours, fifteen hours? I was gonna say I would say between fifteen and nineteen hours. Um, so and I, I definitely I don't necessarily need somebody to answer the phone. I, I in my mind the position would be more a right-hand man or woman as far as who can facilitate program, who can brainstorm program, who, um, you know, to be honest with you, it also possibly to go run programming that frees me up to do some of the other departmental stuff that I'm not able to prioritize, like researching grants and, and stuff like that. So it, it would it would enable the director to focus on more director-like roles that right now often get have to be back burner because I'm creating programming, doing all of the logistics, facilitating the programming. Um, there, you know, there's lots of layers to it. it. It's more than, hey guys, let's go, you know, to Ipswich River Park and have a kickball game. There's lots of layers to it that I don't think people really get. Never mind the fact, there's lots of times where some sort of crisis or emergency comes up, and now I'm in a position that I have to make a choice between meeting the needs of one hot, you know, proven risk youth who needs maybe one-on-one -on -one individual attention and then potentially, depending on when that crisis occurs, if it's during the time of a program, I then am forced to make a decision on how I meet that individual's needs while also still facilitating the program. I had a couple of follow-up questions yes. to you. I know in the slides you were talking about the the survey, and I know the surveys are, are, at least from the communications from the school, 
the surveys are voluntary and they let the parents know in advance mm -hmm. and they're not um, they're not collect they're keeping the data confidential mm -hmm. and it's optional for the student mm -hmm. to participate as well as it's optional if the parent doesn't want their student to participate the parent can opt them out mm -hmm. based on the school department's communications to the parents do you have a sense of how many of our students are participating confidentially in the survey voluntarily, you know, in, by the numbers from which you derive the statistics? So again, any of the numbers came from websites and it came from the Mental Health America, um, CDC. I, didn't, I was not able to use any local information. Again, I gathered information by the census.gov with our population and then used Massachusetts okay. statistics to then. Uh, with that being said, I hang out with a lot of youth. There are a lot of them who are struggling and are feeling like their needs are not being met. Um, and the amount of pressure that we put on our youth, whether it's academically, from a sports perspective, um, our, our kids do a little lot of pressure. Again, never mind that any of the outliers that are potentially falling through the cracks. That leads me to my, my next couple of questions just with regard to your department's work. I know um, Dr. Daly and the school department have really zoned in, um, really laser focused in on this issue and trying to tend to the mental health of the students. And I know that they have added adjustment counselors who are just doing a tremendous tremendous work with not just the at-risk students, but the non-at-risk students who need to go and speak with them for, for assistance for any myriad of reasons why they might have one of those episodes. Um, so I, I'm wondering, do you, in, in your work, do you interact with the adjustment counselors? In, in you know, is that how you, and, and then my second question to that is, they have adjustment counselors for both middle school and mm -hmm. high school, and the school administration has been working on getting more mental health staffing because of the, you know, the rise in that sort of need that's being demonstrated by the students. Do you have a sense of how many middle schoolers are going to your programs and how many high schoolers are going to your programs and have you seen a number of members or participants increase? Um, so I'll be honest, I don't have those numbers in front of me because I didn't come prepared to discuss my programming specifically so I do apologize, I can certainly get you those numbers. Um, with that being said, I work quite closely with both of the new adjustment counselors through the coalition. I'm the chair of the coalition and they both actually, they're now both members of the coalition, which is fantastic. I'm very proud of in the last probably two years especially, we've um, formed a lot of great partnerships and we as a town are working, we're partnering with the school systems more and more every single day. Um, and again, it, they are doing everything they can and the reality is, in the school setting, there's still a lot of other things that they need to be worrying about besides mental health. And even when it's their utmost priority, it's still competing with a lot of other things. Um, so there's that. Um, you know, so again, I do know that they're very, very committed and they recognize the need. Um, I, I would say that yes, I've seen Definitely an increase in the high schoolers. Um, and I, the middle school, I mean, I'll, I'll be honest with you, during COVID, when COVID first hit and I, I transitioned everything virtually, I had a really um, a high level of participation. I'll be honest with you, it's kind of petered out like a lot of things as the further COVID went on because everyone's, everyone's zoomed out. And as a mother, I, I know by the time my kid gets out of school at the end of the day, the last thing in the world that I'm encouraging them to do is now get on another Zoom call to, you know, play Family Feud with youth services. Um, so definitely in the last sense, we've been able to return to in-person programming. Um, it, I'm seeing an increase in already just this, this spring, I'm already seeing, I sent out a newsletter the other day, and I'm already seeing so many more people sign up because I've also been very limited for space. 
even pre pre COVID, I I have to beg, borrow, and steal space to run programming. So, um, you know, during COVID and being virtual, it was challenging. And then even when I do have the option of being in person, I then need to find space to run that program. <laughs> I don't necessarily think that answered your question. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I think it helps to know whether the programming is generating interest sufficient to grow the participation base or whether it isn't. And I think that also helps just inform us on whether, you know, there is a need for an assistant. So I, I think if you don't mind supplementing, um, that would be helpful to just know the numbers. Okay. You know, how many, you know, just on average, how many middle schoolers and how many programs, okay. you know, that you run. I see it, but I don't know if everyone here is. I see the, the tremendous job that you do just with your messaging and with getting the word out on all of the different things. And the coalition is just outstanding in terms of the, the content and the training and the helpful things that they're doing for the kids and for the parents. So I see that work. I just don't know if everybody else does, but I do really appreciate everything that you are doing. And I think it would be a great, if, if we could find the money in the budget, I think it would be a great help to you to just expanding that. I think, I think if you had the opportunity to expand it, more, more likely than not, you'd have uh, greater participation, you know, not just zoning in on the at risk, but I think it, you could just grow the program to where it's, you know, something that people just want to go to to just be a part of it, you know. So I think that um, it, if it's something that we could find the money, I think it would be well worth it, well worth the $25,000. All right. But yeah, if you could get us the figures, I think that that's, that would be great. Okay. That would be helpful. I, I can say, Pre, pre pandemic, pre COVID, my numbers were growing significantly. Every single season, it was increasing significantly. Sure. It was to say, like everything else, the pandemic has had its a direct impact. But I will, I will certainly get you numbers. And you've had to pivot to the nature of the things that you're doing and how you're ministering to the youth. And I think we understand that. We understand that too. So. All right. Are we all? S oh, Mr. Walton. Yeah, just a quick, like even if the numbers have gone down, it actually concerns me more because mm -hmm. it means kids have stopped asking or think there's an opportunity for them. That they've just gone silent. And okay. that would be even worse because getting them to, to yeah. reach up and ask for help or participate would be even less. So if the numbers are down a lot. I'd be actually really concerned. Because that's pretty indicative that yeah. kids are suffering in silence. It's not, this isn't to be where kids are suffering. It's just, the resources we're providing for that suffering. Yeah. For sure. Thank you. This is Gonzalez. Yeah, I just wanted to agree with that. And as liaison, I see, just like I said with Mrs. Magner, I see your heart is always there. Uh, and I know how hard it was with COVID and seeing all those numbers drop and you're almost having to start over again to get these kids back. So just, um, I just wanted to, Say that that I know I, I feel your heart in it whenever you're speaking about whatever it is you're doing and trying to get whatever kids you can get in there so thank you, thank you. and we know your effort is is team oriented with all the people that you're working with in the school department and on CIT and on youth services so we we really appreciate that thank you. okay thank you all set okay awesome. thank, thank you, you mrs. Ford all right, now the library, <laughs> Mrs. Keller. It's another fan favorite, the library. <laughs>
Um, Mr. Gilberto, will we all set? Yes. Sorry, yes. <laughs> Just want to make sure that you are audible, that's all. All right, welcome, Mrs. Kelleher. Thank you very much. As you know, my name is Sharon Kelleher. I'm the director of the library. I want to thank you so much for the opportunity tonight to present our budget. I would like to introduce our new assistant director, Ms. Hathaway. Today's his first day, so. Oh, oh, welcome. 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 Welcome.
I'm just throwing this plug in here because the last slide. <laughs> We have a library of things which we have started uh, becoming very popular in libraries and it is a collection of non-traditional items, things that people just need to use one time and maybe you know, can't afford or don't want to spend the money, don't want to waste by buying things and, and not using them. Um, so what it does is we have 21 currently and what I keep adding is people give us ideas of things and we get lots and lots and lots of suggestions but we want to look at what this town and the community needs are and what someone may use. All you need is your library card to be able to check out any of these things. And very quickly, one is a, a halo, um, a halo bolt. So if your car breaks down, you can charge it. A metal detector, a shredder for tax time. We have ten mobile hotspots that you can um, use. You take it on vacation with you, or if you don't have Wi-Fi at home, which not everyone does have Wi-Fi at home, we have these ten hotspots. Um, we have a sewing machine, a karaoke machine, um, and a car diagnostic scanner. And this is just a few lights. So we have 21 items. Um, and as we see things and there's a need, we're going to add to that collection. And, and that is the goal. The goal is to be able to provide services in a non-traditional way to, um, to save, save people money. We're pretty excited about that as well. So that is the quick, quick, uh, quick presentation. Happy to answer any questions. Okay, and for the, the requested position, it looks like you put, is it 43,000? 53,000. I should put my glasses on. <laughs> 53000 for that request. Finance was like <laughs> raising their eyebrows. All right. Yes. Okay. And that's a full time. Yes, it is. Expect that to be a full time. Full time. Position. Position. Okay. Position, yes. All right. Are there any questions? Questions from the board? None? Questions from the finance committee? <laughs> Yeah, so how many full-time positions do you have now or full-time equivalents or how, uh, how so are you staffing? Have, yes, uh, we have five, we're, we're still short currently um, full-time kind of circulation, so we, when that is full, we have five full-time and eight part-time staff. Five full-time, eight part-time, but yes. we're short one right now? Yes. It's already budgeted, we just haven't filled it yet. Sorry? It's, it's budgeted for, we just haven't filled it yet. We just will be as director and I will fill the rest of the other position. And are you seeing, um, you know, the, the things that they'd be working on, are you seeing an increase in volume of requests for that type of, the things they'd be working on? Have you seen a steady increase over the last five years? Or? Yeah, as far as programming? And yeah. Oh, abso absolutely. The expectation for, for town is to have programming and to bring in quality programming. And just like Jen was explaining, that, that, that whole process, you have to go out and preview something and then, you know, the, the funding for it and then market it and then bring it in and then actually facilitate it that evening. It's just, it's it's a lot of work and, and it needs to be done right. We need, we need to pick the programs that are right for our community. So we need someone who will go to the community and make sure they know what kind of things um, the town is interested in. And as far as the, the other part of it, the outreach, we just, it's, the town is something that we could really benefit from. Like we said, there are a lot of seniors, and we don't have to just be a senior to have outreach services. It could be something that's people need to be able to go out at the time. Um, or it could be, but for whatever reason, we just want to extend it to senior centers and nursing homes and just be able to, to bring our services to the library to people who can't get there. Yeah. And is it, if there's a demand, there's a request, constantly get a request for home services, and we're not able to do it. That'd be good to see the breakdown of those requests if you have them. You know, that would be a good number. I'd like to see, you mm -hmm. know, yeah. you get requests, I don't know if you tally them up. I was going to say, I can, I can tell you that we get a lot of requests. I don't, we don't, we don't tally, but it has absolutely increased. Yeah. You may want to tally. <laughs> I don't know how to quantify it right. You may want to tally in case you have to ask for this again next year. Um, you know, just a little bit more. <laughs> Might be, I don't know, stats matter, you know? No, I understand that. Yeah. Yes. I Try to help you out. It seems important. And uh, with my family, we're, taking advantage of all your things you have to offer. Audible's been the latest thing. You know, so thanks for staying up to date. Thank you. I just also want to commend the effort that was put into the 9-11 uh, the, the anniversary and the display that was there as well. And I know from visiting on the morning of the, that we had the ceremony with the fire police that this staff told me that you were instrumental in getting that to be shown at the library. So, and I think those are the types of things that are also important. 
for our history and for our community to see those things as much as the other programming that you do. So thank you for that. Thank you. And as I said, I'd like to also say thank you to the staff because we've always been leading and we understand that and we work the best we can. But during the time when we've been you know, down a couple of positions and with the pandemic, it, the, the rules change and we're always trying to evolve and have some seamless, provide seamless customer service. And everyone's working really, really hard and really taken on jobs that they had never done before and didn't know they'd be doing. And everyone has done it because they know how important um, you know, being able to, in our little part of the world, we feel like we make a small difference. Mm -hmm. Staff has worked really hard. Kind of expanded to be a hub for the community. It really has, and your messaging is great. Your your social media messaging is is fantastic. It's a, it's a good broad outreach. So, okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to meet you all. Welcome. You too. Welcome. All right. So we have next up is conservation. <coughs> Who do we have here for that? Oh, oh. Ms. Moore. <laughs> Wonderful. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Um, the uh, chair of the Conservation Commission is uh, out of town, and um, Leah, our conservation agent, is on vacation until the 23rd of March. So there are no changes within the conservation budget. There actually is a decrease uh, due to the filling of the part-time position um, that recently just took place in November. The individual that held that job moved on to be the Board of Health's um, administrative assistant. So taking a full-time position. So this uh, individual came in at a lower step than that employee was making. So we reviewed the budget with Leah, the town administrator, and myself to make sure that there was no changes necessary in um, regards to her services that she provides the town under professional services engineering. And she said not at this time, and that we were, you know, in line with, with the budget figures. Thank you. Questions? Any questions from the finance committee? Pretty straightforward. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Gilberto, I'm kind of relying on you in case Mr. Johnson has any questions on it, too. Not I haven't right. seen any hand raised. I have been yet. monitoring, and I have not seen any or any other activity to indicate questions. All right. And we're all set. Okay, Board of Health. We have Mr. Bracey. Busy year for you this year. Another busy year, actually. Thank you. Um, Welcome. Evening. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, at the request of the town for all the department heads to keep our presentation abbreviated, I, I will certainly do so. Um, and I will just... I did send out a packet with a lot of COVID-19 information, updated information for the select board. Please feel free to look at that at your leisure. If you have any questions at the end, I'm more than happy to answer those questions. Um, I'm more than happy to meet with any select board member individually if they have outside questions pertaining to COVID. So I'm going to jump right into the Board of Health budget. Um, we did have some increases under the line item of personal services. Um, it was under administration 11.2%. That increase was contractual agreements with the health director and the, administrative, the new administrative assistant that I believe the finance director had just mentioned. Uh, under purchase services, there was an increase of 1.5%. Uh, that was due to an increase in mosquito control, which we have a contract every year with Eastern uh, Middlesex uh, Patrol that we use here in the community. Um, the one line item that we did add in here under personal services was environmental health for the sum of $60,000, and I'll just explain the reasonings for that. Uh, over the last two or three years, the department, along with the department, of, uh, the town administrator, and the director of public safety, have received feedback from the residential <coughs> and business community, homeowners, realtors, <coughs> license installers, uh, that based on extenuating factors, there has been an increased demand for additional public health services. 
uh, in the area of environmental health. In order for us to meet those demands, inspections, uh, we need, need, uh, need uh, more needs to be done, for more frequent inspections uh, than the department is able to do. Based on the current demands, having a full-time environmental support staff would eliminate the need for contractual services for inspections and would allow the health department to accommodate the residential and business community in a more timely and efficient manner. Therefore, the department is respectfully requesting allocation of the FY23 Board Health budget for one full-time support staff uh, for the field of environmental health. What is that specifically? So that would be specifically a on-site sewage disposal system inspector who would go out and do soil testing and field inspections uh, in the field of, of Title V. How much does that save on the other side of your budget for going to outside contractors? Well, it doesn't save anything. We're asking for an additional $60,000. We still have a line item of 13-2 for plan review. The plan and the thought process is to weed that out over the next coming years so that that one full-time person will be able to capture both of those duties. Okay, so right now there's no diminution in that line item because you you need to whittle that down. Sure. All right, questions? Questions from the board? Questions from the Finance Committee? Pretty straightforward. No questions? Thank you. 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 <laughs> Code enforcement. Code enforcement and ZBA. Welcome, Mr. Mr. Noel. How are you doing? <laughs> Will yours be shorter than Mr. Brace? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I was told I'm taking short. <laughs> Um, we're asking for a per diem ins inspector 
Um, and that's to reinstate the position in which we had previously in uh, 2019, I think 2020 as well, when Inspector DeSalvo was there. Uh, this is to uh, currently it's to sustain the growth that we have. Um, and I can explain that in, this, in, in the uh, next slide. Um, we decreased the training and education uh, through Zoom. Uh, the phone did increase because it was always historically high. Uh, office supplies decreased through the permitting system. Sealer and weights and measures increased um, due to uh, state requirements. Uh, emergency call-outs, we increased that from 25 dollars an hour to 35 dollars an hour. That's basically what the in industry standards are. Uh, ZBA advertising, we increased to nine hundred dollars. Um, it's been uh, incredible. The home home businesses, and uh, unfortunately, some denial, quite a few denials for me. And uh, ZBA postage increase uh, to nine hundred dollars due to the aforementioned. Um, getting back to the twenty thousand dollars, which I'm asking for for a per diem building inspector. As you can see on. on Bottom left, it shows uh, 2019, we had 671 building permits. That's just building permits only. Uh, 2020, we had 824. This past year, we had 979. Um, it's, it's taxing, you know, and to try to do that, especially with COVID. COVID brought on a whole dimension of, of zoning uh, enforcement. The zoning enforcement just I am looking at uh, probably two to three, maybe four zoning infractions per week. And, and before they get to the next level, which is my superiors, I basically take care of them before they get there. And, uh, and it's, it's a lot of work. Uh, the permits and inspection revenue. Uh, we had a total increase in revenue of $425,000 from the previous year. Um, the building department collected $993,000. Uh, we received the weights and measures, $13,585. Total fees collected, $1,006,802. This basically shows the breakdown of the uh, building department. Uh, the, green is, the green is the building. Building permits, yellow, which is it, it, gas which is 12%. Uh, plumbing is 13% uh, in gray. The blue is the electrical, 27%. And orange is 6% HVAC. This shows the amount of building permits from 2020, uh, from 824 to 979. Electrical, 464 to 634. Plumbing, 304 to 310. Uh, gas, 240 to 286. HVAC, 103 to 124. Inspections. As you can see, on the, on the building side, we did, we did 1,377 inspections in 2020. This past year, um, we did 1,904 inspections. Electrical was 1,238, and in 2021, it was 1,163. Now, one of the reasons why that's 1,163, it's less than what it was, is, is the, um, the electrical inspector has, when you, when you perform an inspection on a new home, you go in there pretty much once, and you're doing it rough. Then you go in the second time, you're doing fine. Now, when you go and do something that's rehab, now the electrical inspector has to go in there a, a heck of a lot more. So we've had a lot of new construction this year. So that basically took the amount of... Uh, Inspections, the electrical inspector down a bit. Um, in 20, 2020, <coughs> uh, for plumbing, we did 701. Um, this past year, 704. In 2020, gas, 386. This past year, 405. HVAC, 2020, 203. This past year, 248. As you can see, it's an increase. Goals and objectives, secure a per diem so we, we can meet the growing needs of the community, continue scanning all plans and documentation for uploading the permitting system, continue to be cost effective and maxim maximize staff efficiency, sustain awareness for all the applicants regarding code, code changes that may affect their projects, 
work with Zoning Board of Appeals, EBA, and others to help recognize the need of a new fee structure for different types of relief from the zone uh, from the zoning bylaws. I can expound on that in a minute, if anybody would like me. Uh, continue our zone enforcement, the zoning bylaws, with emphasis on training the assistant building inspector of use and use codes. Work closely with other departments in order to expedite the permitting process. And that's it. Yeah. Any questions? Questions? Questions of the board? None. Mr. Walner. Just a quick question. Uh, you know, the dramatic increase, is that largely being driven by Martin's Landing, or is that? No. It's spread across. Spread across, yeah. Okay. You know, we have, uh, this year we have 16 new, currently have 16 new, new uh, homes going in. So it's, and that's just uh, within the last six months. Okay. And I, and I know you're working on the accessory unit dwelling policy with CPC. Is that still in process at this point? That is still in the process, yeah. Okay, great. Look forward to hearing more about that. But thank you. Finance committee? Oh, any other questions? Finance committee? Questions? All right. Thank you. Easy. Okay, thank you, Mr. <laughs> Noah. Okay. That's it for bud for this item on the agenda, I think. Okay, next order of business. Is the Thompson Club Inc. Pro Shop and TCC Grill change of manager. Welcome. Good evening, Good evening. Good evening. Uh, Dave Wilson representing uh, Thompson Country Club. Um, Mario Ruiz is a longtime employee. Uh, we're making a transition from a, an employee who left uh, our employee at the end of the year, Trevor Fuller, who's been in place for about five years. So Mario's taking over that role as a food and beverage manager. So we wanted to transition the, uh, the name on the licensing to, uh, to his name. How many years has Mr. Ruiz worked there? Yeah, I've worked uh, five and a half, six, six years since the grill opened. He's been in charge of the kitchen operations since since the grill room opened at Thompson, um, working for the prior managers. So okay. he's pretty uh, familiar with the whole operation, but you know he he wasn't the primary person at that point. So. Okay. I had a restaurant for 15 years. Mr. Louise, where was that restaurant? Okay. Charlestown. Did you sell that alcohol there? It was an alcohol free. I restaurant? was in charge. Uh, I was kitchen manager and I was in the kitchen kitchen for years now. I'm in charge of ordering it. Okay. All right. Does anyone have any questions? See you later. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Does anyone else have any, any questions? That's fine. Uh, hearing none, Mr. Uh, Chief Murphy, we're all set to vote on this. Yeah, the police department uh, finds no, nothing that could um, prevent him from obtaining a license. Perfect. All right. Do we have a motion? Yes. Okay. Madam Chair, I move to approve the change of manager for the seasonal. Club All Alcohol License for Thompson Club Inc., TCC Grill, Two Mid Iron Drive from Trevor Fuller to Mario Ruiz. Second motion. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. Walner. All, know that all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Approved. Thank Good you. luck. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Second motion. Second motion. Go ahead. Madam Chair, I move to approve a change of manager for the seasonal club. Wine and Mold License for Thompson Club Inc. Pro Shop 2A Mid Iron Drive from Trevor Fuller to Mario Ruiz. Second the motion. Motion by Mr. Strudo, second by Mr. O'Leary. Any further discussion? <laughs> All those in favor? Yes, I know. Aye. 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 Well, four. Oh, it's approved. See, I was, I was Thank sitting you. on his Thank side. You. That's why you guys confused. They were already <laughs> signing it. That's why they're, they're <laughs> not right paying already. attention. They're already signing the Multi thing. Multi-tabs here for you. There are four documents circulating for signature, two under the name of the old manager and two under the new because it okay. will be a renewal. But then it will also be a pending change. Is this for me? So yes, yeah, I'm both of those. Got it, okay. What about all these on the fees? Well, that's later, right? Yes. yes. Okay, so our <laughs> next order of 
of businesses the appointments to youth services and recycling committee and do we have a no vote? seasonal I have more oh didn't we just vote on seasonal? no but there's other stuff I'm sorry do we have other motions I have other motions I have all kinds of stuff that we, we have to do okay just left they're but not even here they're, they're all set no oh, they are? these are other items oh okay. I'm sorry okay We want to increase participation. We need adult beverages. I'm telling you, we need more people here. We I say we get the karaoke machine from the library. <laughs> Use of town resources. Okay. okay. Do we have other yep. motions? Madam Chair, I move to renew the seasonal club wine and malt beverages license for Thompson Club Inc. DBA Pro Shop 2A Mid Iron Drive to expire November 30th, 2022, subject to all regulatory department requirements. I second the motion. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. Walner. All those, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Do you have another motion, Mr. Studo? Yeah, I do. Was there two more of these? You guys still have them? Oh, okay, have them, sorry. Yeah. I'm just going to do all of them and then just send everything around so you guys okay. can sign them once just to make it easier. Right. Is that okay? Madam Chair, I move to renew the seasonal club all off call license for Thompson Club Inc. DBA TCC Grill to Menire Drive to expire December 31st, 2022, subject to all regulatory departments. Second the motion. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. Walner. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Madam Chair, I move to renew the general on-premise seasonal wine and malt beverages license for Golf Facilities Management, Inc., DBA Hillview Snack Bar to expire December 31st, 2022, subject to all regulatory department requirements. I second the motion. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. Walner. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Madam Chair, I move to renew the common particular license for Thompson Club and DBA TCC Grill to Mid Iron Drive to expire December 31st, 2022, subject to all regulatory department requirements. Second motion. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. Walner. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Madam Chair, I move to renew the common particular license for Golf Facilities Management Inc. DBA Hillview. Snack bar to expire December 31st, 2022, subject to all regulatory department requirements. Second the motion. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. Walner. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Madam Chair, I move to renew the transient vendor license for the sale of flowers, Christmas trees, etc. at 226 Main Street for Robert Connors, 58 Wyman Street, Woburn Mass to expire December 31st, 2022. Subject to all regulatory department requirements. Second motion. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. Walner. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 And okay, we have, now we have our next order of business, which is the appointments to youth services and recycling committee, which, do we have any for youth services? Yeah, I, I'm not buying them as there's an activity forms on here. They're they're uh, they're managed here for you. They were provided, I think, the other day, right? I saw one for the recycling. I didn't see the. Uh, they're just separated. Uh, um, I see youth services um, and the recycling. Page fifty-one. Yep. It's a citizen activity form for Kathleen Logan is a candidate for youth services, and then they they are separated. If you go after the legal bills, is actually the Others, so this is an activity form. Okay. I'm sorry, no, I'm not going to have that Okay. Before the legal bills. Before. And uh, Thomas Kisselak, who was a candidate on paper for the Zoning Board of Appeals, but also expanded his level of interest and was referred, I believe, to the Recycling Committee for appointment as well. So those are the two votes for tonight. Can we put them on both? <laughs> This is a fabulous resume. Do you want me to go? Yes, please. Madam Chair, I move to place a nomination the following name for appointment to the Youth Services Committee for a term to expire on December 31st, 2024. There's one opening. Kathleen Logan. 
Second the motion. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. Walner. Um, Mrs. Gonzalez, you're on youth services. Were you able to talk with the chair about? I was. Okay. We did discuss it, and um, we're very happy to have um, Ms. Logan joining us. Okay. This is a roll call name vote. Oh. Any further discussion? Mr. Walner. Kathleen Logan. Mr. Studo. Kathleen Logan. Mrs. Gonzalez. Kathleen Logan. Manu Pelli is Kathleen Logan. Madam Chair, I move to place a nomination of the following name for appointment to the Recycling Committee for an indefinite term. There's four openings. Thomas uh, Kasselak, did I say that right? I second the motion, sorry. Motion yeah. by Mr. Studo, <laughs> sec <laughs> second by Mr. Walner. Um, Recycling Committee is Mrs. Gonzalez. Yes, yeah, so um, Mr. Kassela joined into the meeting, the last meeting we had, just to kind of observe and see if he would be interested. And after the meeting, he, he said that he would like to join. So that was great. So we're happy to also have him joining the Recycling. So Ms. Mr. Kislak is a he works in patents, right, Mr. Gilberto, from his from his citizen activity form. Is that the That's same? What I saw. Yeah, patent agent. He listed his em employer in yes. and um, he has if it's well worth it to go look at the website because they interview him. They oh. do an interview on the website and he's just a phenomenal candidate. I would love to see us put him on, you know, <laughs> other <laughs> other committees where oh we boy, could utilize his, such a good <laughs> utilize his, um, yeah, utilize his expertise or just his his background. So, but it's well worth it for the board to look look at his interview. It was great. Yeah, he, they're very, they're new to town. Him and his he wife is, came yes, from Texas. Yes. From Texas, yes, um, and he's. I believe on the form he was sitting for the patent bar, but I think he might have already passed the patent bar. I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure that either that's in process or, which is a very difficult endeavor. But his background is really interesting, the, the work that he's done. So I could easily see him being a value-added member of a number of different boards and committees, not the least of which is wastewater, just to be able to get some get some uh, other assistance on those. But recycling, okay, you know. <laughs> hey, don't knock that. No, no, I'm not recycling. No, I know because it was, there's openings on it. So in any event, <laughs> I would encourage my colleagues. Some important things I would encourage here. my colleagues oh, for, yeah, for, for, for the future, <laughs> for the future, absolutely. Uh, but I would encourage my colleagues to, to look it up. things kind of be coming up. So this is a name, a name, <laughs> roll call, name vote. So it was motion by Mr. Studio, second by Mr. Walner. Mr. Walner. Thomas, and I think the name is Clays? Kisselak. How do you pronounce it? Kisselak. We hope we're pronouncing okay, it correctly. Okay, Kisselak. Kisselak. Kisselak sounds. Thomas Kisselak. <laughs> Mrs. Gonzalez. Thomas Kisselak. Manu Pally's Thomas Kisselak. Oh. Now we have the next order of business, which is the vote on the town auditor. Mr. Gilberto, I'm going to turn that over to you. Madam Chair, I think we're still in the process of trying to schedule a virtual meeting with uh, one of the candidates. I don't think we were able to do so prior to the meeting, so we'll recommend holding off on the vote. Um, we do have a meeting that props up between now and the next regular meeting. We may ask the board to consider making that appointment. Um, we're looking at two candidates just for preference based on our solicitation of the finance director a few uh, weeks ago. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to conclude that no later than the 28th meeting. Okay. So we're holding off then on a vote for this meeting. We're going to table the vote. Yes. All right. Okay. <coughs> and are my colleagues in agreement with that? We don't Great. even have a proffered mm -hmm. candidate at this point, so there's not much we can do to vote on it. Okay. So we'll expect that for next next meeting. At the latest time, sure. Okay. Next order of business, public comment. Would anyone like to speak? I'm not seeing anything on the virtual portion of the meeting, Madam Chair. 
Okay. Next order of business is legal bills. Madam Chair, I move to approve legal bills for January 2022 in the amount of $15,650.88 as follows. General 5195.88, Labor 3259.50, 20 Elm Street 7195.50, total 15650 Second the motion. Motion by Mr. Studo, second by Mr. Walner. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I have one left, but you guys still got to talk, so I won't read it. The uh, drawing. No, you looked at me. I have nothing left. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I thought you meant mean. another bill, and I no, I have saw no bills. One in the well, I have bills, but none of the select board right. will take care of it for me. <laughs> We're at town administrator's report, Mr. Gilberto. Madam Chair, thank you. I have two items to the board on this evening. The first is as a follow-up to the information I provided to the board in my January 10th report attached is a uh, draft of potential comment that the town planner has written relative to um, the uh, so-called uh, MBTA communities changes. The planner will be at our next meeting, uh, not only for the Planning Commission's budget presentation, but also to review this matter with the board. So there'll be much more to discuss at that point, but I would encourage you to take a look at the draft of that comment, which we will also forward in the packet for the next meeting. Second, I included a copy of an opinion letter from town council regarding the potential construction of a community center at the property uh, on and near Ipswich River Park. I know that this has been a matter that for which has been um, a number of questions that have come up and uh, Attorney Eichmann has provided us a written opinion which I have forwarded to the board in my written report and will forward to uh, some interested stakeholders over the course of the next few days. Third, I attached a copy of uh, postings for three vacant positions that will begin being advertised this week. The first is the project manager grant coordinator position that I know we've been discussing um, in recent months. The second, the director of public services, which was approved by the select board in January. And the third, the director of elder services, as I mentioned earlier in the uh, presentation. Um, we will probably hold the applications for that third position until we get through the process for the second position. We didn't want to lose any ground. Um, so I just encourage the community keep an eye out. Um, certainly are looking for qualified candidates, um, both uh, from within and without the community. Um, and uh, certainly we'll consider uh, any and all qualified candidates, particularly those who may be in the community. Fourth, uh, some may have noticed in the building here, the DPW is conducting some painting to the interior of Town Hall. Um, we intend to photograph the paintings on the front hallway out here to preserve them um, in, uh, in a picture that could be mounted here in the town hall, but ultimately to, uh, to paint the walls. Um, they are uh, um, in, uh, in tough shape, as I think folks know. Um, that won't happen right away, but I just want to alert the community to that because I know that folks are used to seeing them out there. And our goal is to document them with uh, digital and um, printed images and to hang a photograph here in the building where people can see them and know the history of this building, but uh, hopefully to actually paint the hallway in the front and then finally, there will be more brought up on this at the March 28th meeting, but we have, um, um, we have uh, some uh, news with regard to the operation of the function hall at the Hillview. Um, and so the commission will be before us for a, uh, their budget presentation. We'll, and we'll review that uh, with them um, and with you uh, on March 28th. So stay tuned. Thank you, Madam Chair. Mr. Gilberto, is the planner coming to the March 28th, 28th meeting? That, that was the plan uh, as we conclude budget hearings, planning commissions on that agenda. Okay. Because, because aren't these, these comments are due by the, is it by the end of the month or is it? I believe that we're within the deadline for filing the comments. Okay. I did check that with her. Um, yes. And I believe the provision in the law required there to be some sort of a, a, a meeting or a hearing of advising the public of this change that has right. taken place. And yeah. I, the intention is to bring that up here at the select board meeting yes. um, so that it gets highlighted um, you know we I think you know and the members may know we have a pretty aggressive zoning um, in the 40-yard district over where Pulte and Edgewood are located but unfortunately it does not appear that that is sufficient to meet the criteria required so um, we have options including not complying with it uh, which some communities have chosen to do and she can review that with us um, I know of at least one nearby community that is basically saying we're not going to try to comply because it's just too, too adversarial with the community. So right, because we're only an adjacent. We don't even have service here in the community, mm -hmm. so we're only an adjacent community. But in terms of the comments that you're 
you inclu included mm -hmm. because of the efforts that have been made for housing stock increase here. I think another comment could be incorporated that there, sh there is no waiver provision, and I know it's not. I know it's intended to be, you know, uh, prospective, not retrospective. But I think there should be some waiver of, you know, communities that have within the past maybe three years increased their housing stock to this to this. Um, to this purpose and to this goal, and you know that I think that should that should take place. And then also, we don't really have service. We, you know, we had to set up our own uh, transportation van, so we don't we don't benefit. Even though we're paying in the the dues, so to speak, we don't really benefit from that payment. So, what are we going to see in terms of service in this community if we're you know, gonna engage in this zoning district or overlay district to, to comply. I know the end game is to g get access to funds, but I'd like to, us to know as a board when we do hear the presentation, how much of those funds we've availed ourselves of previously? How mm -hmm. much are we really gonna, would we really be expected to receive? And, and you know, how much have we received in the past? Because this isn't new funding source it's an existing funding source correct so I'd like to know those things certainly I'll convey that to the town planner manager okay thank you any other questions or comments for mr. Walner just a question and maybe you said it I, I might have missed it so we're hiring the public services director and we're also recruiting for the elder services director at the same time we are but we're not intending to proceed with the hiring of the second one until, Until we the, the public person. safety will have a person that will have a say in that. The public services director. Okay, that's, 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 the intent. that's yes. what I didn't hear. Okay, public that's that's perfect. That makes sense. Yeah, that and would be like their first hire. Great. Yes. And we expect there'll be crossover to then maybe candidates that are duly qualified potentially, and we'll, mm -hmm. we'll go through that process. All right, thank you. If that's an important position, I think that would be a great first hire for the public services director. But are we looking here for? Personnel here that could serve in that role that we already have, like oh, mainly yeah. our fire chief or, you know, For public services. This is that. I'm uh, sorry. Yeah, you're I thinking. Was thinking public I'm mixing it up. Public safety. You're thinking you're public oh, I'm mixing public it up with public safety. Okay, yeah. I'm sorry. This yeah, this is that. Not I, the new position. New I, old position. The new old position. Yes, I'm so sorry about that. That, I I was thinking back to the early presentation and when you said public services I said oh my gosh don't we have a little bit more time with <laughs> <laughs> we do we do have time yeah. <laughs> all right okay public safety yes that's great okay I'm sorry sorry for the confusion it's okay it's all right any other questions no or? that was the only question I had. okay Thank you. board member reports I'm, I'm, I'm empty. Mr. Sudo board member reports no Mrs. Gonzalez no this is all said um, it, and by the way, this is old and new business. Okay, I just have to say, make the announcement that Notorious, uh, our own clerk's wonderful singing son, <laughs> who's a member of, won the regional championship and now they'll be going on to the national championship wow. in New York. Wow. And from what I heard, it was an amazing show. These are the outliers. They have put in the time, they have put in the effort, they have been doing this for year after year after year after year. These are kids that started in their elementary and junior high and high school, so we're so very proud of them. It's nice to have North Reading on the map for something something like that, and yeah. I hope we wish them the best of luck. It's in, it's in April. The Friday of April vacation, as I understand it. So, with congratulate them, congratulate, congratulate Eddie, you, congratulate Mama. the whole group. It's really mm -hmm. amazing. I'm so proud of them. So, congratulations. It's a big deal. Yeah. So, all right. So that, that I just had to say, wonderful yeah. job to Notorious and to the director who is as invested as the members of the group. With that, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Madam Chair, move to adjourn. Second, second motion. <laughs> <laughs> motion. Let me have that one. <laughs> motion by Mr. Stewart, second by Mrs. Gonzalez. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.